of the constitution deals with the powers of parliament to amend the constitution and its procedure it states that the parliament may be exercise of its constituent power amend by way of addition variation of repeal any provision of the constitution in adherence with the procedure laid down for the purpose however the parliament cannot amend those provisions which from the basic structure of the constitution in the forthcoming program paragraphs uh, the procedure was limitations of the amendability of constitution has been laid amendment till may 2013 as of may 2013 there have been 97 amendments to the constitution of india since it was first enacted in 1950 the 97th amendment act amended article 19 and added part 19b came into exist uh, force on 12th january 2012 it ad added the word or cooperative societies after the word of unions in article 191 c the instead of article 43 b uh, so promotion of cooperative societies and order part 9 b that is the cooperative societies the amendment objective is to encourage economic activities of cooperative which is in turn help progress of rural india it is expected to not only ensure autonomous and uh, democratic functioning of cooperative but also the accountability of the management to the members and other stakeholders status of 98th amendment bill it aims to instant article 371c in the constitution 2nd january 2013 the objective of the amendment is also empower the governor of karnataka to take step to develop uh, the hyderabad karnataka region the procedure for the amendment of the constitution as laid down uh, in article 368 is as follows an amendment of the constitution can be initiated only by the introduction of a bill for the purpose of either house of parliament and not in the state of legislature the bill can be introduced either by a minister or by a private member and does not require prior permission of the president The bill must be passed in each house by a special majority that is a majority that is more than 50% of the total membership of the house and a majority of 2/3 of the members of the house present and voting. Each house must pass the bill separately. In case of the disagreement between the two houses, there is no provision for holding a joint sitting. of the two house for the purpose of deliberation and passage of bill if the bill seeks to amend and federal provisions of the constitution it must also be ratified by the legislature of half of the states by a simple majority that is a majority of the members of the house present and voting after duly passed by both the house of parliament and ratified by the state legislature when necessary the bill is presented to the president of for assent the president must give his assent to the bill he can neither withhold his assent to the bill nor return the bill for reconsideration for the parliament after the president's assent the bill become an act the constitutional amendment act and the constitution stands amendment in accordance with the term of the act type of amendments article 368 provides for two types of amendments that is by a special majority of parliament and also through the ratification of half of the states by a simple majority but some other articles provide for amendment of certain provisions of the constitution by a simple majority of parliament that is a majority of the member of each house present and voting similar to the ordinary legislative processes notably these amendments are not uh, deemed to be amendment of the constitution for the purposes of article 368 the constitution can be amended in three ways amendment by simple majority of the parliament amendment by special majority of the parliament and amendment by special majority of the parliament and ratification of at least half of the state legislature a brief description of the above types has been laid down below
by a simple majority of parliament a number of provisions in the constitution can be amended by a simple majority of the two houses of parliament outside the scope of article 368 these provisions include admission of the establishment of new states formation of new states and alteration of areas boundaries of names of existing states abolition of creation of legislative councils in states second schedule emoluments allowances privileges and so on of the parliament governors and speakers judges etc quorum uh, in parliament salaries and allowances of the members of the parliament rules of the produce procedures of the parliament privileges of the parliament its members and its committees use of english language in parliament number of uh, poison judges in the supreme court conferent of more uh, jurisdiction of the supreme court conferent of more jurisdiction on the supreme court citizenship acquisition and termination uh, e election uh, to parliament and state legislature uh, delimination of um, constituencies union territories fifth schedule administration of scheduled areas and scheduled tribes Sixth schedule administration of tribal areas. The majority of the provision in the constitution need to be amended by a special majority of the parliament. That is a majority that is more than 50% of total membership of each house and a majority of two thirds of the members of each house present and voting. The expression of total membership means the total number of members comprising the house, irrespective of fact whether there are vacancies or absentees the special majority is required only for voting at the third reading stage of bill but by way of abundant caution the requirement of special majority has been provided for the rules of the house in respect of all the effective stages of the bill the provision which can be amended by this way including fundamental rights indirective principles of state policy and all other provisions which are not covered by the first and third categories by special majority of parliament and consent of the state those provisions of the constitution which are related to the fundamental structure of the pol polity can be amended by a special majority by the parliament and also with the consent of half of the state legislature by a simple majority of uh, if or some of all the remaining states take actions or bill it does not matter the moment half of the state gives their consent the formality of completed there is also no time limit within which the states should give their consent to the bill the following provisions can be amended in this way election of the president and its manner extent of the executive power of the union and its states supreme court and high courts distribution of legislative powers between the union and states any of the list of the seventh schedule representation of states in parliament power of parliament to amend the constitution and its procedure article 368 itself the question whatever fundamental rights can be amended by the parliament under article 368 came for consideration of the supreme court within a year of constitution coming into force in the sankari Prasad case, the constitutional validity of the First Amendment Act of 1951, which curtailed the right to properly was challenged, the Supreme Court ruled with the power of the Parliament to amend the Constitution under Article 368. Also includes the power of amend uh, fundamental rights. The word law in Article. 13 includes only ordinary laws and note the constitutional amendment act of constant laws therefore the parliament can abridge or take away any of the fundamental rights uh, by enacting a constitutional amendment act such as a law will not be avoided under article 13 but it is garlic nath case 1967 the supreme court review reversed its earlier stand in that case the constitutional validity of the 17th amendment act which in inserted certain state act in the Nithi schedule was challenged the supreme court ruled that the fundamental rights are given a transcendental and uh, 
immutable position and hence the parliament cannot abrade uh, or take away any of the fundamental rights a constitution amendment act is also a law within the meaning of article 13 and hence would be void for violating any of the fundamental rights golaknath case 1967 the parliament reacted to the supreme court's judgment in the golaknath case 1967 by enacting the 24th amendment act of 1971 in the case of the bharati case of 1973 the supreme court overruled its judgment to golaknath case in 